Hello everyone. So we are back with our new project, which is the detection of fake faces using the neural layers of the model. We have we are using Python programming language and the concept of neural networks for this. Uh, let's have a look on the code. So first of all, we are trying to set up the environment for our notebook. We are cloning the GitHub models. So let's have a look on this first order model. This basically deals with a lot of faces. Let me show you. We have a data set of faces and like this, we are using the data set to train our model. We have test and train both the data sets with us. So this is it. We have YAML files that is basically an extension. So that's all. After that, we are checking no certificate bit for the tarballs. We are installing the star, these tarballs into our notebook. We are creating a new directory checkpoints and we are navigating to that, that directory using percent cd command. We are again uh, downloading few tarballs and installing them into our notebook. We are installing image IO package into our notebook. Basically, this project, uh, this package helps us to deal with the images. We are again cloning a model. In the next step, again, we are downloading some of the tarballs and some of the packages. And this block from line 26 to line 29. This block is basically used to install the predefined Python packages such as bottle, bottle, websocket, ujson, and gevn. Bottle, uh, websocket, and uh, both bottle. These are WSGI lightweight frameworks. These basically deals with the socket things and server client programming. We are importing warning warnings and we are suppressing the warnings that are thrown by the port. We are importing JSON and eval JavaScript for our code. So this use cam function basically provides the uh, functionality of using the uh, webcam of your computer or the laptop, whatever it is. So this is written in the JavaScript that you can see if you drag, what will happen? If you leave, what will happen? If you drop, what will happen? So we all, we have defined each and everything and we have included the comments as well so that we can understand more. This uh, function you will be able to see in the end of the execution so let me show you first of all what it is so this is the installation basically we have installed all the tarballs all the packages and libraries which are predefined in python or imported from the github all are installed after that uh let me show you one thing there are there might be few libraries like this which are incompatible and they will show the exception so this is also one thing uh after that uh we can it is very difficult to set up such a heavy model such all the libraries all the github models into our personal laptop or computer so it is better to use collaboratory environment because in collaboratory we are given some 65 GBs amount of empty space where we can set up our things. So it's very important to, it's very, I mean, it's very convenient and advisable to use Google Collaboratory for this project instead of using our personal computer. Next, we are having, uh, we are considering the URL of few images. Let me show you the URLs. So this is, for example, an image. For example, this is another image like this and this is the third image that we have taken so for our project we have we have created three variables image one url image two url and image three url and we are storing our images into them 
we are fetching the static images from the internet to our notebook. So this is it. In next cell, in next cell, this is the third cell, I think, and we are uh, defining some of the variables for our images. For first image, we have defined center to head, crop, and expansion factor. As you can see, for second image, we have defined them and we have defined them for third image as well. We are creating a tuple. This bracket indicates the tuple. We are storing the parameters for first, second, and third image into the this thing. Uh, center image to head will store the will store this parameter for all the three images. Crop image to head will store the second parameter for all the images. And except expansion factor, this is ex expansion factor for all the images for first, second, and third. Uh, next, we're importing NumPy, uh, CV2, IM show, and resize. So, CV2 is basically the open CV thing. This package is used to read the images and deal with them in a more convenient way. This provides us many functionalities. That is the reason we are using it. This is the resize package. This allows us to resize the image using code. Face alignment package also provides us some advanced feature of face recognition. So let's go ahead. We are trying to use the face alignment function from face alignment package in which we are passing the required inputs. In case we face an exception, we have used the exception handling except block and we are installing some of the packages into our notebook and then we are working on it. Def create bounding function. This function basically takes expansion factor as one. That's just a default factor and the target landmarks. Okay, we are we have defined X and Y coordinates, minimum X and Y and coordinates and maximum coordinates to uh, create a bounding box around the image. Next, we have fixed dims function. In this function, we are returning a list, a sliced list out of the image. This function is get crop function. This basically crops the image. We are passing the image variable. We are passing the bind, uh, Boolean variable to one false center face and crop face. We are passing the landmarks and if expansion factor is taken as one by default. We are converting our image into the numpy array, numpy tile using fixed dim function that we have defined above. And we are using if else block to handle all the conditions that might be faced by our code. After that, uh, you can see that we have performed some mathematical operations to deal with the image and we are returning the final X, X and Y coordinates of the image. Next, we have pad crop resize function. We have IM variable and X, Y, variables that we have received from previous function. We have new height and new width also. So we are using if else condition to handle the coordinates of image. In case nothing is passed, then we will take it by default zero. So, and if nothing is passed for the, like, uh, for the X axis, for the top corner, then we'll take it as W, that is the width. We are uh, resizing the image using the resize function and we are returning the resized image. Next, we are considering two lists, source image and original image. These are the two lists, empty list basically, and we are using a for loop. We are using a uh, we are considering three images. First is this, second is this, and third is this. We are using these images and we are cropping them that you can see. Right, so we have resized the image mainly. Next is the thing we are firstly, in this cell, we are initializing tunnel variable as R2, which is a default value that we have given. We are including importing request and RE, RE is the required expression. 
we are trying to create a pool and a server source socket thing. So we have used exception handling for that. After that, we are declaring the port number as 6006 as the default port number that should be used for our project. In case tunnel variable is ngr, okay, then we have to clone this. In case our variable is argo that we have defined in the first line of this cell, then this condition will be executed and localhost metric would be 49589. We are importing time and JSON. So JSON is basically used to deal with the JSON objects. That is one thing. We are using a high low and in case Channel is equal to ngroc, then this function will be executed. Otherwise, this function will be executed. In case there is some error, then code will wait for one millisecond. Sleep function means that code will take a pause for one millisecond because we have passed one as the parameter over here. After that, we are traversing to the directory first order model. We are importing load checkpoints and we are loading the YAML file that I showed you uh, on the link. I'll show again if that's needed. Next, we are importing convex hull from SciPy spatial package. We have defined a normalized KP function. This function mainly returns the normalized KP in which we have used convex hull, convex hull library uh, package. We are importing torch, uh, CV2, bottle, G event. Given web socket, web socket pool, PIL, uh, all the packages, these all the packages deal with the images. Bytes IO, string IO mainly deals with the uh, conversion of image to the byte stream or the string stream. We are using multi processing because it might happen that our image is too, too large to process for a piece of code. So that is the reason we are using multi processing. Next, we have a norm source. So in this function, we are passing a variable i and by default, we are taking crop value as zero. We are taking the image. So if crop is not equal to zero, then we'll resize the image. In case crop is equal to, uh, if it's equal to zero, then nothing will happen. After that, this piece of code will be executed. We are re returning nothing from this code these are the uh, urls that we are taking as the next step let us have a look on our next function this one load style gan avatar this function is adapted from this particular link if you are length with the example then we are taking, then we are generating a random value between this range. If the URL ends from C, then we are generating a random variable, random integer mainly. We are changing the uh, color of image using CVT color function, and we are passing the color scheme as BGR to RPG. We are storing the variables into original image and source image list that we have declared above. Source image list is mainly having the resized value of the original image. Source, KP source, source area, have gen, crops. These are the empty variables that we have generated for now for the future purpose. Next, we are using for loop and in the range of original image, We are using if condition to handle with the num avatar condition. Else, we are in else condition, we have given a try except block in case somehow our code crashes or some mishappening happens. So, we'll print the exception. Next, we have full normalized KP function, in which in this function, we are returning the new KP value after the complete normalization of image. We are passing the boolean variables and exaggeration factor as one. We have just if else condition 
and we have created a new dictionary and we are returning this dictionary in the end so this is the final output of this function we have taken the kp driving initial factor and driving area as null by default we have created a function make animation in which we have passed the boolean variable exaggeration factor as one by default we are referring to the global variables this and this one after that we have used the while loop and we are returning the transpose my uh, transpose of the array that we receive as the output this function is mainly used to deal with the animation that we get out from the image we have used the socket programming this is known as routing we have created a function ws when in which we have used the global variables that we have generated over here and above we are running the while loop until user explicitly wants to quit so this is one thing uh we have used try except block as the exception handling over here also we have used the exception uh, try we have used if else block in case new avatar variable has the value greater than 0 then we are going to generate this block and we are set will be setting the reset as true in case else nothing will happen exaggeration factor is also being manipulated over here in this step next we have alpha auto adapt movement scale and all the factors are being manipulated over here uh so the code mainly allows the camera to run this code allows the camera to run and to capture the images from the real time we are uh, importing logging portal g event packages for this we have also created a new class that is my g event web socket server this basically provides us the functionality of socket programming that is the server client programming and that is the thing we have created a shutdown function that basically closes all the instances of my g event socket class and this is the thing if name is equal to underscore underscore main underscore underscore this means that if this particular file is run for this as the main i mean this is non if this is not a callable file then we are uh, creating the two processes for the multi process of multi programming uh, multi processing we are applying a sync function that is already defined into the library and we are using importing io from python.utils package and we are running the socket this is the output when we run this code this code will open the webcam it will capture the real time images once you hit control plus c the webcam will close and the execution will stop so this is all about the code uh i hope you have got an overall idea of this thank you so much